Hi, YouTubers and wet chambers everywhere. It's Mark with GeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on. <laughs> yeah, I got a nice, good, basic cup of coffee. This morning I've got the, uh, I went with the Great Value from uh, Walmart, big store, big box store. <laughs> Coffee blend. This is a breakfast blend. Uh, this is great. The great value breakfast blend. I like it. It's it's uh, affordable. It makes a nice cup of coffee. If you want something stronger, you could put it in an extra half scoop. Uh, that sort of thing. But I like this a lot. And uh, I'm going to go through my coffee because uh, because of this virus crisis. Um, Going to the store is not as leisurely as it once was. You're, you have to uh, practice social distancing and they have all kinds of safeguards that have been put into place. And uh, the, in my area, the shelves have been uh, fairly stocked. Um, I don't see really a shortage of much things. I've seen toilet paper on the shelves and I've seen bread and uh, that sort of thing. And ground beef, I got ground beef the other day. Everything, was, everything seems to be replenishing itself. I don't think anyone has to panic, try to hoard these kinds of items. Um, but um, I'm not hoarding coffee, but I have plenty of coffee from just doing these videos, trying to just, uh, you know, getting different coffees. But uh, I have plenty of coffee, so I'm gonna be using kind of the same stuff as we go forward here because I'm not gonna be visiting the store as often uh, as I had, so I'm just going to use what I have in the house and uh, and hunker down like everybody else. Um, hang on one more sip. Yes, yeah, good stuff. And I've got my uh, Mary Melody's coffee mug, the last hungry cat with uh, Sylvester and Tweety Pie, and it's done with a film motif. And the reason why I'm using this is because I want to give you a film recommendation. You're probably at home looking at different programs and movies to stream uh, and watch while you make it through these um, days of uh, staying at home. Uh, and let me, let, me, let me recommend a movie for you. Uh, I love this movie. It's been out for a while. It's streaming on Amazon Prime now. So if you have Amazon Prime, you're all set. All you have to do is just click play and you'll watch it. Um, Mission Impossible Fallout starring Tom Cruise. What? A fantastic movie. Now, I like all the Mission Impossible movies. I think they have been great fun. But this one really, really raised the bar. And uh, Mr. Cruz really put everything on screen. I mean, he skydives, actually skydives out of the back of a, of a, of a plane, uh, does a halo jump, high altitude, low open, actually did that. The fight sequences are phenomenal. The acting is great. The, the characters are, uh, are endearing. You really care for them. Uh, just a terrific, terrific movie. Now, uh, if you want to watch the entire <laughs> series of Mission Impossible movies, uh, there is a DVD collection. I think it's in 4K. I'll link it below if you're interested. It's an Amazon affiliate link, just so you know. Uh, but uh, you can also get these on Amazon Prime to stream. And uh, the current story arc, more or less, really starts at Mission Impossible 3. That seems to be where the main cast of characters have been assembled and have moved forward through the various movies. Some of the characters come and go, but for the most part, the main characters are from Mission Impossible 3 forward to this current one, Fallout. The last three Mission Impossible movies have been phenomenal. Uh, Mission Impossible 4 was Ghost Protocol. Uh, that's where the key scene on that, or the big scene, is where Tom Cruise is on the outside of the Burj Khalifa Tower, the world's tallest building. He's climbing on the outside of that. And yeah, he actually went out and did that. They filmed that somehow. Amazing. That was great. Uh, Mission Impossible 5, known as Rogue Nation, that is where the, he's hanging on to the, onto the side of a, a Atlas C-1 aircraft, and he actually did that. <laughs> that was pretty exciting, really, really amazing. Uh, and Fallout, Fallout's great. And uh, really, the movies have this way of, of, of bringing you in, and then all of a sudden, they hit you with the credits, and oh my gosh, the movie, we're, we haven't even seen the credits yet. We're gonna, the movie's starting now? It, 
I love that. I absolutely love that about these movies. So yeah, Mission Impossible, Fallout, great movie. Uh, really liked it a lot. Uh, two other Tom Cruise movies I can I can recommend uh, are the Jack Reacher movies. Uh, the first Jack Reacher movie was terrific. The second movie was also very, very good. I like that character. I like his portrayal of the character. And in the first Jack Reacher movie, uh, I challenge you to find a better bar fight scene. That is probably the best bar fight scene I've seen in any movie. Yeah, so those were also very enjoyable. Uh, okay, so there's some, some movie... Uh, Ah, some movie recommendations for you. You can sit down with the whole family. These are PG-13 movies. You can sit down with the whole family pretty much and enjoy them. Nothing really overly offensive in any of them. Just a lot of good action, adventure, and uh, great acting and really terrific stories. All right. Okay, now before I go any further, I got to make note of um, not to touch my face. I'm talking about shaving and I want to talk touch my face in talking about it. I'm going to try not to do that because... They recommend during this virus crisis, don't touch your face. And yes, I have washed my hands before I started shooting this video, uh, but yeah, I'll try not to, to uh, touch my face. Uh, I did it in the last video inadvertently. Boy, I gotta stop it. I just think I just did it once before, so I have to be really, really careful not to touch my face, just to set a good example. All right, so we got uh, Don't Touch the Face, uh, Stay at Home, Movie Recommendations. Please stay safe. Let's get to some of these questions here. Uh, let's kick it off with Chad Homier. Uh, this had to do with the recent reviews I did on Sterling Shave Soaps. I reviewed Barbershop and Sharp Dressed Man. I just recently got these. Viewers have been recommending I get the Sterling Shave Soaps. They've been absolutely correct. These are fantastic shave soaps. Chad Homier wrote, you definitely, you definitely need to try Margaritas in the Arctic Shave Soap from Sterling Soap Company. Margaritas in the Arctic. Uh, you know what, Chad? Thanks very much. You are probably in a select group. Uh, probably maybe a half dozen viewers have said margaritas in the Arctic. They have, they have uh, commented in the video saying margaritas in the Arctic. Yeah, that is definitely on my list. Uh, I'm spending a little bit of time going up to the Sterling Soap Company uh, website and going through all of the shave soaps, trying to figure out what my next purchase is going to be. Am I going to get a, a full puck like this, a sample puck? Uh, what am I going to do? Because I want to try a lot of them. I want to review them for you. They are terrific. The slickness, uh, the lather has been fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And I've mentioned uh, in some previous videos, I used to say to beginner wet shavers, if you want to get a good shave soap, tabak, tabak, tabak. Well, now it's going to be sterling, sterling, sterling because it lathers so quickly and easily and there are so many great scents from which to choose. So yeah, these are great. And I had a shave with Barbershop again this morning. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, along the same line, uh, Michael L. Shoot wrote, now, Michael, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. It's spelled S-C-H-U-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's pronounced shoot. It might be shoot I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's shoot. Anyhow, Michael wrote, best soap you will ever use for the money and all those scents to choose from. Absolutely, I, I agree, I agree. I have the best viewers anywhere on YouTube and they've been recommending Sterling Shave Soap and I'm sorry I didn't pick this up sooner and review it, but uh, it worked out, I'm enjoying them and yes, you're right, that's the the real big strength of it is that it has all these great scents and all of them, I'm assuming all of them, lather, lather equally, well, equally well. At least uh, this is what I'm hearing from viewers. Uh, along a line of Sterling Shave Soaps, Mike Rose wrote in part, finally, my favorite, he knew you'd love it, and he's talking about the Sterling Barbershop scent. And yeah, I do love it. I do love this scent. I absolutely love this. He said, also, the more you use the barbershop shave soap, the more you'll see the scent change slightly. Uh, you know what? I think it's grown on me. I really like it. It has a nice, warm, yeah, it has a nice, warm, vanilla kind of a scent. You can see I used it this morning. And uh, there is a bit of spice to it. 
sometimes yes, sometimes no. Some people get a, like a little bit of a citrus zest. I don't get that uh, from it. But uh, some people have described it as kind of like a cookie dough kind of a scent. It really is an old school, classic barbershop scent. There is a, uh, a real warmth and fullness and richness to the scent, really. And it feels great. It feels just terrific on the, on the skin. Thomas Jefferson, another viewer, said that he thought that perhaps this was more a cool weather soap than something that's all year round, I would assume, is what he was alluding to. Um, it was in the mid-30s this morning, and this was absolutely wonderful for this morning's shave. Uh, I think it's something that I would use year round, but there are many, many others out there. To, to pick from that would be great in hot weather. So I'm looking forward to exploring that. Okay, in the mix with the Sterling Shave Soap conversation, uh, the Red Pitbull mix wrote, nice shave, Mark. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Sterling does a fantastic job with the scents. After watching you load your brush, I realized I was loading mine too long. I was getting a very thick lather that wasn't slick, but almost dry. I'll be using it again next time I shave. I have the black cherry soap and it smells like a delicious candy. And I have the Ben Franklin aftershave balm. Didn't really care for the Ben Franklin balm at first, but it has definitely grown on me. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to trying one of their splashes. I'm very curious as to what other soap you bought. Well, the only two I have right now are the Sterling Sharp Dress Man and the, uh, the Barbershop. That's all I have right now. And I have some on my list that I want to pick up Definitely for sure. Margaritas in the Arctic is on my list. I'm certainly going to try that one. But there are some others I want to, uh, I want to try. So I'm going to make a list and put an order here in probably the next week or so. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't know if I'm going to buy um, you know, something full size or sample. Uh, and there are little tins to put the samples in. I, I don't know yet. So we'll have, to, we'll have to figure that out. Now, as far as uh, the brush load, here's what I do. Uh, and let me show you with um, the barbershop soap here. The first thing I do is I put hot, hot, hot water on top of the soap puck and I let that, let that soak in and then I go take a shower. And the water's hot. I put the hottest water I possibly can on top of the soap puck. Why? Well, hot, you know, it's physics. Hot water molecules are moving faster than cold water molecules. So the hotter the water, the more you know, the more energy there is there, and that's kind of getting things going. Uh, then what I do is I'll dump that bloom water off into the sink, and that kind of adds to the overall scent and aroma as I shave, and then I'll use that water in the sink as, as a pre-shave. Now, when I get my brush and I start loading it, I will load, I will start swirling, and I'll start loading the brush, uh, and I'll stop when I start seeing a cream build like a creamy yogurt consistency, start building up around the edges of the container. That's when I know I've got a good load. That's my rule of thumb. And it seems to have worked from soap to soap to soap. And it certainly worked with the Sterling soap. But I think the added water on top to soak the puck, getting it going, and then just swirling until you start seeing the cream around the edges of the container, then I know I've got a good load and I can just I can just start, start, start doing my face lather then. And um, I have found that uh, that works really, really well for me, whether I'm using a bore brush or a synthetic brush. Uh, I will say this, the bore brush seems to transfer the heat from the puck to the face a little more, uh, a little better than uh, a synthetic brush. Uh, it, the bore, bore brush hairs retain that, that heat that I had on the puck from that hot water a little better than synthetic brushes. They're both good, but I think the bore brush is a little warmer when I'm doing a face lather than the synthetic brush. They're both warm, I just think the bore brush retains that heat a little longer and a little better. So uh, I hope that that tip helped you uh, because um, absolutely loving these shave soaps, loving them. Uh, this next question comes from Carmine Silveroli. I hope I pronounced that right. Carmine Silveroli, S-I-L-V-E-R-O-L-I. -E Carmine, let me know if I got it right. Uh, and he left this comment in the Sterling Barbershop uh, Shave Soap uh, video review. And he wrote, hey, Mark, love your videos. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. 
Uh, you know what? It's very fulfilling to hear that people are enjoying the videos. Uh, uh, they're being entertained by them. They're being informed. They're learning something. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, anyhow, he continues, just wondering, how come sometimes you use pre-shave oil and other times not? Do you find you get just as close a shave and protection without using a pre-shave oil? Thanks in advance. Well, Carmine, that's a great question. And uh, if you go to your question... In the comments area, I did give you a written answer, but I wanted to share it with viewers here and expound on it a little bit. Um, sometimes I use a pre-shave oil in video, sometimes I don't. Well, the reason is sometimes I'm just testing the soap and I just want to see how the soap is, if the soap has a lot of slickness uh, and the performance of the soap. So I won't use a pre-shave oil with it. Um, Yes, a pre-shave oil will add slickness and protection to your, to your shave. Absolutely no doubt. When I came back to the traditional wet shave, I happened to go to a local mall and I walked into uh, an art of shaving uh, a store, the art of shaving store that was there located in the mall. And there was a young lady there, a young sales rep, who really knew her stuff. She really knew about men's shaving. And she went through the various soaps and creams and oils and explained everything to me and actually demonstrated uh, how to build a lather. You know, she said, oh, give me your hand, you know, and she was, look, I'm going to show you. She swirled a little bit in the sandalwood soap and just look at that. See, you don't need a lot, you know, this kind of thing. And that was really, really very, very helpful. But I did purchase some pre-shave oil from her and I purchased the, um, the Art of Shaving Sandalwood pre-shave oil, this really was a big, big help to me when I first came back to the uh, traditional wet shave. So sometimes I'll use a pre-shave oil to kind of up the slickness depending on the soap or the cream I'm using. Sometimes I won't. Certainly, we're talking about sterling. You know what? You don't need a whole lot of pre-shave oil. This stuff is very, very slick. So it depends on the actual shave soap that you're using. Uh, where is it? Right here. I'm looking around for it. I bumped my camera. Sorry about that. I'll just reset it there a little bit. Um, Captain's Choice Bay Rum. Boy, this is really slick. This has got a lot of slickness to it. I'm, I was really, really surprised at how slick this was. Uh, certainly the sterling is very slick. The other rule of thumb that I have is that if I'm using a, uh, a shaving cream, I'll certainly use a pre-shave oil. Uh, more often than not. Uh, why is that? Well, um, when I'm using um, a soap, a shave soap, and I'm, uh, and I'm loading the brush, I'm going to be doing a face lather. When I do a face lather, I'm moving the brush on my face, I'm lifting the whisker, I'm exfoliating the skin, and in my opinion, I'm actually uh, coating that slickness on my skin just through the action of a synthetic or a bore brush. With a shaving cream, I'm building that lather in a bowl. And then instead of actually uh, agitating it on my face to build a lather, the lather's already built. I'm now painting it on. So I'm not getting that exfoliating process or the lifting of the whisker when applying a shaving cream lather. That's why I'll use a pre-shave oil and I will uh, rub that on my skin with my hands and that helps to lift the whisker and really work it into the skin and get that extra, extra slickness on there. And then I'll paint on the, uh, the lather from the shaving cream. And that's kind of the way I see it. The, uh, I find the pre-shave oil to be a little more beneficial when using a shaving cream, but I will use it with certain shaving soaps as well. It just depends on the slickness of the shaving soap and what kind of video review I'm doing. I've done video reviews of shaving oils and the ones that I've liked. I certainly like the Art of Shaving Sandalwood oil. This is good, although it's a little heavier um, than, than most. So uh, you just need a little bit and it gives you a pretty good coating. The other one that I like a lot is the Vikings Blade Black Forest pre-shave oil. You can just spray this on here. This is nice. This is a little lighter weight oil, so to speak. It goes on and really, really coats your skin well. Um, Vikings Blade makes a gentle mint. I like this a lot. I'll use this with... Uh, 
a Parasso or a similar kind of uh, shaving cream or shaving soap, Parasso in a tube. I'll use it with, with that, the CO Bigelow is what I have, um, because uh, I like the mint to menthol mint kind of um, similarity that they have. Uh, I'll also use the Vikings Blade uh, Sunrise Citrus. I'll use this with a, um, well, you know, a citrus-based soap or cream. I've used that. I've used this with the, uh, the What the Puck. Uh, what is this? This is the uh, Orange Sunrise. I want to call it Sunrise Orange. Orange Sunrise. These were a good combination. Uh, like, I mean, I mean, I like it a lot. The other one that has really come on really nice is the BAD Shave Pre-Shave Oil from uh, Global Shave Clubs International. This is great. This, this is really, really nice. I like this a lot. I've used this with shaving soaps and creams. Like this a lot. Um, you can use this before, during, and after. That's why it's called BAD, before, after, during. Uh, this is terrific, and I like the scent, and it does a great job in adding slickness and protection to the skin. Um, let me show you some others. These are interesting. The Chagrin Valley Soap and Salve Company. They make a shave soap that is very, very slick. This is non-tallow based. This is um, more vegan on the vegan side. Let me give you a, a shot of the back here. You can take a, do a freeze frame of that so you can see what it, what it contains. This is really a natural, organic kind of a shave soap. And uh, it has bentonite clay, provides razor glide for a clean, close shave. Citrus essential oils help balance natural skin oils. Lavender to, uh, tones the skin and eases inflammation. Uh, and uh, you know what? Yeah, all those claims are great. It has a great lemon lime scent. They also make a, an aftershave balm uh, to go with this. And the thing is, this is more of, a, 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 of an oil salve kind of a balm. You get a little bit, warm it up in your hands, and then apply it. This is terrific stuff. You can also use this as a pre-shave. Uh, before you use this. Uh, you don't really need a pre-shave for this, but this can act as a pre-shave. And boy, that's a nice combination too. Um, also, uh, this is the other one here. They have the Woodland Breeze, and that goes with their Spice uh, Shave Soap. This is nice, this is nice. Um, this is really nice. You can see I've used a lot of it, and I like it. I just put it in my puck and just Lather it up. This is not a, um, this is not a uh, thick, rich, full Santa beard kind of a lather from, from these products. This is more of a light, foamy, slick kind of uh, uh, lather, which I sometimes really prefer. I like that a lot because there's a lot of slickness there. And of course, um, also in the same line are the Vikings Blade products. The Vikings Blade Black Ocean, they have a Sandalwood, uh, New York 6 AM. I like these a lot because these are also super slick shaving creams. Uh, sometimes I don't need a pre-shave oil with these because they're so slick. Uh, sometimes I'll use it, sometimes I won't, but it just depends on the kind of, uh, uh, kind of slickness and experience you've had with the uh, with the shaving soap or shaving cream. This new one, TRA, I've used this on camera before. This is like a glycerin-based kind of a soap. It's got a great citrus honey kind of a fragrance to it. Uh, I don't use a pre-shave oil with this. I can, I have, but uh, this has got a great slickness. Again, it's another super slick where you get a light, light foamy kind of a, a of. A, uh, lather. Um, just to wrap up, also, you have the super slicks that are brushless, like the Cremo and uh, the Trader Joe's Moisturizing Cream Shave. Uh, also in that category, there are others, but these are the three that I grabbed. Kiehl's, this is another one. These are all brushless. Uh, you don't need to use a brush with these. They're super slick. You don't really need a pre-shave. This really is a very, very slick surface, although uh, along the lines of pre-shave, I have used Cremo and these others as a pre-shave, as a pre-shave cream, and then I've lathered with a soap or a shaving cream, and this adds that extra slickness. So you can do that as well. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of, uh, lot of things uh, that you can, you can mix and match. Uh, oil might work for you well. Uh, shaving, um, 
a pre-shave cream might work for you well. Um, an actual super slick shaving cream that I just showed you, that might work. Uh, there are so many variables which makes a traditional wet shave so great. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic because you can mix and match. I'll do that the night before, lay everything out. This razor, this blade, this kind of cream or pre-shave cream, this kind of shaving cream or shaving soap, um, uh, this kind of aftershave. Uh, I really look forward to my morning shave. I really look forward to getting up and having that morning shave. So yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell. It's a great question. Uh, so yeah, I just, I mix and match. So there you go. All right, uh, <laughs> let's move on to the next question. This one's from Thomas Jefferson, a very loyal viewer. Thanks very much. He happened to comment in a video review that I did of the Omni Shaver. The Omni Shaver has been absolutely wonderful. If you've not seen the video review, check it out. I'm going to be doing some other video, re video reviews on this. This is for uh, shaving the head, also your arms, your legs, your body. It's a bi-directional shaver. Uh, this has been an absolute game changer for me when it comes to shaving my head. I'm gonna use it again tonight. And uh, this is probably the fastest, closest, smoothest, most efficient razor I've ever used to shave my head with. Now, I've used safety razors before, and those are great to shave my head. And again, in keeping with what I just discussed, slickness, slickness, slickness is key when doing a head shave. Uh, and this really takes advantage of the slickness. It's bi-directional, and you're just going zip, 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 and you're done. It's amazing uh, how fast and how efficient of a head shave you can do with this. Now, <laughs> Thomas Jefferson asked, he said, sounds great. Are you brave enough to try a face shave with it? <laughs> no, that's very funny. I know he's, he's being rather humorous there, but no, it's not for uh, a face shave. Uh, it's for a head shave. And uh, the great thing about it is, is that I could do my head shave so quickly I imagine I have yet to try it in the shower, but I am going to try it in the shower. I'll get some of their shave butter and just uh, coat my head and use this. And I imagine, just based on how I've used it, uh, I can probably do a head shave in the same amount of time it used to take me to shampoo my hair when I had hair. That means uh, in just the ordinary amount of time it takes me to take a shower, I can then uh, you know, get out towel off and enjoy my uh, face shave, my traditional wet shave even more because I'll have time to do it uh, and we'll have gotten a really nice head shave to boot. But yeah, it's for uh, head, arms, legs, uh, body, and it does an absolutely great job of it. And uh, yeah, uh, from the back of my neck all the way up to my brow here, this thing is really, really terrific. So I like it a lot. So I'm the shaver. So I'll be using it more. I'll be reviewing it more um, and uh, doing some more head shaves with it. Uh, I'm learning a lot about it. There's not a big learning curve uh, to use this thing. Uh, you can use it in a snap. It's easy to use, but it is very, very efficient. Very, very easy to use. Like it a lot. Okay. All right, uh, wrapping up, Ricardo Lorenzo uh, wrote, hello mate, just wanted your opinion. I wanna buy a new razor. Don't mind spending as much as 200 pounds. Just wanted to know, as you have tried a lot of razors, what is the best razor you have ever used? Hang on one minute. Alexa, how much is 200 pounds in US dollars? 200 pounds is 245 US dollars and 44 cents. Wow, almost $250, $244, $245 uh, in U.S. dollars. Wow. Well, you know what? This is a really involved question because there are so many categories of razors. There are vintage razors. There are twist-to-open razors. There are adjustable razors, three-piece razors, two-piece razors, and they all come in a variety of prices. There's also an interchangeable razor out there that I use, the Rockwell 6S. Uh, Vikings Blade makes some great adjustable razors. Um, you know, it, it's going to take a little more than just, yeah, get this one razor. Uh, I'd like to give you a lot of uh, different choices. So I'm gonna do a separate video on that. 
uh, to discuss that because it's a great question and I think it deserves a separate video answer. So I will do that hopefully this week and get it posted because there are a lot of variables there and uh, you can go in a lot of different directions. Just for, as a for instance, at $245 or 200 pounds, you can buy a mint unopened in its original case Gillette Fat Boy adjustable razor that looks absolutely brand new and get great shaves with it. I mean, you know, I've seen them go for about 200 to 250 US dollars right in that price range easily. So if you want to spend that amount of money and get a great vintage adjustable razor in new condition, you can do that. You can also get those kinds of razors that have been reconditioned and brought up to spec and replated uh, from a variety of sources out there. Uh, and really, I mean, that's, that's one direction to go in. Uh, so yeah, there are a lot of different choices. That's just one example. So you know what? I'm gonna give it some thought and do another video on that and uh, get back to you on it. Okay, so thanks for the question, uh, Vicardo Lorenzo. I really do appreciate it. And thanks for the inspiration for a new video. So thanks very, very much. Well, that's it. Thanks very much for tuning in, folks. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Um, comment below, let me know. Check out the Executive Shaving Company. Use the code MARK5. Check out my blog, georgetoon.com slash blog for my comic strip, George. Other cartoons, other videos like this. Check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zeredi where you'll find all the products I review on this channel. Organize and categorize so you can find everything in a snap very easily. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.